God, can we play more commercials on this station? This station is about me. What? Oh, <laughs> hi, I'm Amy. So, right, we're back. I'm here with, like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. But now I'm here with Jazz Torrent, a rock god, all the way from Scotland, England. So, Jazz, I'm sorry. As you can tell, ooh, I'm a really huge fan of Love Fest. Hey, 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 then he says, sorry, babe. You are a woman of substance, and I like that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's cool. And, oh, Jazz, who is that thing with you? I didn't mind Mandy. I think she's zoning out a little bit, aren't you, man? Look, she's got to take me 24-7, you know what I'm saying? Poor lassie. She's had a turn of Jazz more than one girl can take. Eh? Say hello, man. Hi, Paul. Bingo. Where are we? Uh, the rock lifestyle hasn't been too good to her. Man, just go away and sit in a lobby until we're finished, hen. Check the fridge. Is she okay? I mean, apart from being an ugly, cheap cow, she looks half dead. I see. Hey, hey, hey. Seriously, man. Didn't cramp my style. I'm an artist, you know. Uh, okay, Jazzy. So, Jazz, I was listening to your album on my boombox all weekend. Like, how is it? Uh, I mean, you know, you're really totally famous. No, wait, I mean, uh, like, so anyway, how are you? It's cool, man. I'm cool. Things are good. You can't OD on love, and I have tried. The tour is really something special. You Americans! You really know how to rock and roll, man. No way like back home. I'm so confused. Is that because the new album didn't do so well in the UK? It's that fascist Thatcher. I sing about working class people trying to make it through a tough life. I sing about the things they want. Trashing hotel rooms, wearing glitter in your eyes, and waking up in a ditch next to a total sports car. When you make minimum wage, love conquers all. Know what I mean, Sheila? Uh, the name's Amy. <laughs> Aye, right, whatever. Like I was saying, man, right? I'm an artist. I ain't in this for the money. If I were, would I be wearing these clothes? It's because the critics don't know, you know? They stand there and they do not know. Have they ever really listened to the lyrics to bury me deep inside? Eh? If the music isn't what they want to hear, if the songs ain't the right songs, you know, if things aren't in their space or, or whatever, right, man? You know, that's my choice. You know, because, man, I am Love Fist. And the thing is, right, they're not, and if, if they don't get it, and if they're not riding my wave that day, man, well, you know, I ain't gonna go cry puppies just because their dog is teething, you know? As far as these idiots are concerned, I am a man. But I tell you, sweetheart, I've been over to the other side, baby. And man, oh man, it's beautiful, but these idiots, man, they've not been there. Okay, right. This last album wasn't your best selling, was it? I don't even think it charted in the UK. What is a chart, man? A piece of paper. Bring that to the concert and I'll set it on fire. I ain't no Ronald Reagan a rock, babe. Album charts are a metaphor for human isolation and the breakdown of interaction. And I say it's time to rock! Right, man? Right, Jimmy. That's right, because I say it is. Because, sweetheart, I, to oh, man, I am Love Fist, the biggest band in the world. Yeah, but you and Dick and Percy and Willie, you're all Love Fist, the four Scottish horsemen of the apocalypse. Fist till morning. Take it on the chin. Zinc deficiency. Four boys against your face. Great tracks. What memories. And here you say you dedicate the album to the children of the night. Who are they? No, 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 sweetheart, man, babe. Let's go on. Let's get one thing straight here. Hello? Are we recording here? This is for the record, right? Testing, testing, testing. Now listen. Love Fist is Jez Torrance. I sing the songs, sweetheart. It's my face on the merchandise. If you see us in concert, see four men rocking and dancing with tears in their eyes, you will see I am Love Fist. He who pays the piper plays the tune. Oh, I didn't know you had a piper in the band. Love, I was talking metaphorically. I'm a poet. Condensed meaning. Enlightenment. We're a family living in Death Valley. But I walk alone. I am on a spiritual journey. And if Percy or Dick or anybody stands in my way, the contract says I walk. I've been dragged back and held down and embarrassed by those guys. But you know, it's part of being in a band, man. Light wearing makeup. Yeah, but wasn't Percy voted Guitarist of the Year by Kerap Rock Monthly? Look, look, I love the whole bit with the fuzzy guitar, but he's overrated, love, right? 
without the torrents of abuse, Love Fist would be over. And the new contract reflects that. As an artist, it's really important that I make a lot of money. Right, man. You need to keep you and our friends in your diamonds and that, eh? Yeah, rock on, Keith, Roger, what a trip. Yeah, shut up, you silly top. Ugh, let's take a caller. Hello, ooh, wait, wait. you're on the line with Love Fist. Hi. Yo, this is Wayne, man. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm on the phone with Love Fist. Hold on, this is... Hey, what's up, Jez? I'm a huge fan. I go to all your concerts. I get crazy. I wear my Love Fist t-shirt every day, even when I'm with my old lady. Hey, I heard this subliminal messages in your video. Is that true? Listen, seriously. The big hair, the limousines, the girls, the partying, the clubs, the hotel suites, another TV smashed into a thousand pieces, right? After my unfortunate incident in Cleveland, I told the press, I don't like Mondays. This livens up the day. If you're asking me if we was using backmasking, the music is reversible, but time is not. Do you want me to say, congratulations, you have just discovered the secret message. Dreams are made to be broken. Like so many broken dreams, I want to pick up the pieces together. God, I am so creative, love. Oh, wow, I think I've just wrote a song. Maybe I'll write a song about you, eh? But anyway, like I say, that stuff, it doesn't matter. For, not for me. I'm a spiritual person on a journey, right? And nothing will stand in my way, you know? Boy, do I. On the track Satan's Pillows, you sang about how a broken heart can... About how a broken heart can't ever be mended, just broken again. I know. Really powerful stuff. Emotional. I think that song says everything that needs to be said about love, man. When you belong to the night, it's best to take advantage of it. And what takes you up will take you down, man. If everyone remembered that, the world would be okay. Thanks, love. You are a real smart cookie. Thanks, Jazz. Now, do you think it's important that, well, I mean, you're a great-looking guy, even though your girlfriend is a cheap tramp, but do you think it's important that rock and roll bands look good, or is it about the music? Like I said, I'm a creature with two faces, babe, you know? An angel and a devil. And that means it's really important to look good. Music cannot stand on its own. You need to look good singing it. I'm tired of people saying all we care about is partying and that we can't play. If we couldn't play, people wouldn't come to our concerts. We're not going away. And if we do, it won't be on purpose. Where are we, dear Creek? We're on the radio, love. Stop dragging me down. I told you, if you ride a whirlwind, don't be surprised when the dawn breaks. Anyway, where were we? Ugh, she's really getting on my nerves. Why are you waving your hands at me? Oh, I'm supposed to go to commercial. I'll be right back. Howdy. Welcome to Farewell Ranch. They say the golden years are the best years of your life, but for many seniors, they just stink up the house and make the grandkids feel uncomfortable with unmodeled affection. Now, your old people can be earning you money and enjoying the final years of Farewell Ranch. It's a working farm, cattle ranch, and crematorium where the cowboys are all over 75. They'll enjoy rodeos, working in the fields, and tending all the final resting places of their new friends on Sunshine Hill. Farewell Ranch works your loved ones from sun up to sun down. And when your loved ones passes away, we'll send you a presentation package VHS with the spurs and boots they are wearing as they went on to a better world. Our residents sure love it here. Right, Norm? Is this WW2? Farewell Ranch, the only way to ride into the sunset. Start my morning, you make my night And giggle free with everything, you make life bright Getting fat and laughing, laughing and getting fat With giggle cream, you get both things and what's more fun than that? That's the sound I love Giggle cream, it makes dessert funny Asian pajamas? Chinese bandana, something missing? With a throwing star, kendo sticks, or nunchucks at Vice City's one-stop shop for the silent fashion assassin. Wow, you look like a psycho. Complete the look. Hi, I'm Amy, and you're on K-Chat. Jez, you were telling me about the music? Ah, yeah. You know, we wear these costumes to appeal to the working man because after you spend the day working in a steel mill, you want to wear tight leather clothes and play air guitar. That's what we're about. The recent album was a musical trip through hell, and I think it shows. Oh yeah, it does. I mean, 
I saw Satan. He didn't like what he saw in me. He saw darkness, but also a gentle side. Ask Mand. I can find treasure in the dark. And it's that, um, it's that, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, thing? Yeah, that's the thing that typifies me as an artist. Heart and soul. Head and trousers. Everything. That's what you get at one of my shows. Jez Torrent and Love Fist will really show you, you know. We take the soul into darkness. Bring your lighters. You know, I invented that. I've about had it with wankers ripping off my vibe. I wore women's clothing first. Why? Because it tells you about light and darkness. Like the moon. But seriously, love, you've got great eyes, really. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jez. I've always thought your music really lets people see into your soul. Right, into great big pools of pain like me, dangerous bastard. You see, babe, I've had my heart broken and I am still a man. I'm working on a song right now called Fallen Stars on Shattered Dreams in the Rain. It's about being able to communicate through music rather than words. It's set in a wind tunnel. That's why there's a huge snake painted on my jacket. The snake symbolises kind of a subconscious power force. Because life is pain, babe. And without music, I'd be lost. This new album is our most mature work yet. I am brilliant on it. Because I sing from the heart. About heartbreak? Babe, 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 don't go there, please. You do your show a favour, take it easy. My people spoke to your people about this, and seriously, I appreciate the offer. And look, I would shag you, but you have to understand, it's too soon. Because Shari left you, right? Babe, babe, my people spoke about this to your people. I said, do not mention Shari. It's like sticking needles in my soul, voodoo. Who are you? Are you my personal devil? That you could do this to me? The pain is too much. I have hair in my face to hide my soul. Shari had to go because she wanted to be a marine. We couldn't be together. Seriously, don't go there. <laughs> this is so sad. Do you have a tissue out there? Oh, Jess, I'm so sorry. Seriously, love, if you listen to this song, Dragon Eyes, it says everything that needs to be said about her. You can't help me. It's raw, like a chicken's head, you know? The pain it grips you and makes you think about everything. It's the longest night of all. December of the soul. <laughs> Jess, this has been the best interview of my life. Thanks so much for coming on. For all you Love This fans out there, it's time for a contest. That's right. Ladies and gents, you're listening to me. Jess Torrent on KChat being interviewed by... Bye. It's Amy? Oh, God. You forgot my name? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Citizens of Vice City, now you've got the opportunity to win a part of me, my signature, Ink. I only give away parts of myself to people who have bought all our records, so you've got to answer this. On which album did Beast Fist appear? Was it A, Dogs on Heat, B, Fat Chicks All Day All Night, or C, Devil's Own Band? For the chance to win tons of Love Fist prizes, just answer the question. All you need to do is write the answer on a postcard and send it into the station. Jez, before you go, will you please play us a song acoustic? Piss off! Acoustic songs are for sissies. Babe, seriously, do not cramp my style. Look, I've got to save up the love for the big show. Babe, I love you. I really do. Friends for life. Dance into the fire and all that. Always good to meet a fan. You look after a man for us, will you? Oh, I lost my lighter again. Love Fist! That was the dreamy jazz torrent of Love Fist, who are appearing this week in Vice City as part of their world tour. Bring your lighters and a spare pair of panties. I know I will. We'll be right back on KChat after these messages. Thanks. What makes a real American? A cowboy hat? Enjoying a fine T-bone steak? Going to a baseball game, shooting a gun. Maybe it's the freedom to go into a poor country and tell them how to do things. Heh, those are all great qualities. But one thing that makes a true patriot is the ability to choose an American car. When you buy an import, you take a hot meal off a hard-working American's table. There, there. This poor girl is going to starve to death just because you bought a cheaper, more efficient Maibatsu. Without gross symbols of excess, what will Americans have to look up to? Our great industries are threatened. Cars, pornography, armaments, and they need your help. So the next time you buy a car, a piece of adult literature, or a missile defense system, make sure you do the American thing. 
Old Max, we go everywhere together. Right, boy? At Pet Stuffers, we know there's nothing like a relationship between a man and his dog. Sometimes you just can't let go. Max, you didn't eat your food. That's the second week in a row. Max? When the unspeakable happens, just put your four-legged friend in the refrigerator or freezer. Then call Pet Stuffers. We'll be there within a week to pick him up, and in less than a month, he'll be back as good as new. Through an ancient Egyptian miracle process called taxidermy, you and your best friend will always be together. Yeah, that's a good dog. Pet Stuffers, when you just can't let go. And coming soon, grandparents forever. Hiya! The key to feeling great is looking great, and the way to look great is to have great hair. That's great. Take your hair higher. Take your hair to the limit. With Sissy Spritz, when you're clubbing or sticking your head out of a stretch limo sunroof, you want to know your hair is performing to the limit. Higher. Gonna get higher than sky. With Sissy Spritz, it's hair for the future, not the past. When you have great hair, people know you're a winner. Gonna die on my own hair tonight. Sissy Spritz may cause dry mouth, dilated pupils, paranoia, heart palpitations, and nosebleeds, but your hair will be great. Hiya. This is Kate Chat. Welcome back to the show. I'm Amy Schechenhausen, and next up, we're going to be interviewing someone with a lot to say for herself. A woman who pretended to be a man and then wrote a book about it. I haven't read it, but I'm going to pretend I did. She's professor of anthrosociology and women's studies at the University of Vice City. And her name is Michaela Krapis. Krapitis. Michaela. Michaela. Hi. Welcome to KChat. Hello. Hi. So, Michaela, you're a teacher. If you mean professor, yes, I have a doctorate. Teachers are homely women who make minimum wage to keep the teenage boys off the streets during the day. I am very intelligent, and I'd rather talk about that. I'm trying to sell my book. Okay. Now, it says here you wanted to be a man so much, you dressed up like one. Well, that's a load of crap, my dear. More misogynistic propaganda. I hate men. Can't bear them. I think they're a complete waste of time and space, quite frankly, and a disaster for the planet. Me too. I just got dumped. Oh, well, it is unfortunate you measure your self-worth in relation to a man, my dear. Look at you. You could be an attractive girl. If you did some physical labor, cut your hair short, grew out your body hair and wore boots, for example, you mustn't get sucked into their heteropatriarchy. But I like dating. Having someone buy you dinner is great. Well, we'll come back to you and your problems accepting who you really are. Let's talk about me a bit more. Okay, so tell me about your book. You hate men a lot, and you dressed up like one, and now you've written a book about it, right? More or less. As I said, I'm very intelligent, so I don't expect you to understand, my dear, but I'll try to keep it simple. I've always been fascinated with the world of men. Revolted, of course, but fascinated. Now, as an academic, I can get paid to write a book about pretty much anything, as long as I give it a complicated title. Are you with me, gorgeous? Ooh, I think so. Good. Then hold my hand. It helps me think. No! Okay, okay, sorry. Don't be so weird. God, everywhere I go, just like the university won't let me display my beautiful and sensual woodcuts in the student comments, it makes me so angry! Where was I? You were talking about yourself? Oh, of course. The ego is a dangerous thing, especially in my case. I'm a Jungian. Anyway, so what I did was dress up like a man and enter into the man world. I can tell you it was more horrifying than I imagined. What did you do? Well, the first chapter, I was a roofer. These sexists spent all day on a roof talking about us, Amy. I was expected to sit around and talk about what I had done to women. Of course, I had to, so as not to blow my cover. So what's the name of your book? Yes, as mentioned hitherto, my book has a very, very obtuse title. Being and Singing. From Freud to the Building Sites, A Woman's Journey into the Male Psyche. Huh? What? I'll admit it's not very catchy, but academia is not about getting to the point. It's about exploration. Okay. Wow, I'm learning a lot today. Yeah, so I entered the world of men, in disguise, of course. I was dressed like a man. Okay, and you haven't changed back? What? What did you say? You're still dressed like a man. No, I'm not. These are my normal clothes. Amy, for God's sake, don't fall prey to the patriarchy's evil fashion schemes! Oh, sorry. Anyway, I learned a lot when I was a man. Did you know, for example, that during my time as a steel worker in Pittsburgh, I learned that men sometimes speak crudely about women when they are out of earshot? 
I was horrified. Or that men regard some women, like you, Amy, as mere sex toys, things for their amusement. Unbelievable! Or that men actually find sports interesting. It's appalling. And they run the world, my pretty. Oh, yes, they run the world. They do? Yeah. Look at Reagan. Look at Thatcher. Look at Gorbachev. While we stay home and bake cookies. Well, screw that, sweetheart. Yes, I agree. Good. Don't bake a cookie. Smash him in the face with a baking tray instead. He's a brainless dolt. He's a man. Did you know men enjoy looking at pictures of naked women? It's called pornography. It's sick and foul. I'm giving a talk about it this weekend at the Women's Center. That's women with a Y. Uh, I think you spelled it wrong. Are you a woman? Three of the five letters that make up your description are M-A-N. You're too dependent on men, Amy. That's why I don't call myself a woman, Amy. Um, okay. I bet this radio station is owned by a man. White male conservatives monopolize the media, selecting right-wing blondes to propagate conservatism. I don't have blonde hair. Not yet, Amy. Not yet. Did you know men drink beer and smoke cigarettes and wear hats? Uh, mm, yeah? Yeah, well, you must have read my book. <laughs> I discovered a lot of things. I was also a policeman and an untrained brain surgeon, and they're all the same. All women haters. But just because men like sports and hats doesn't mean they hate women, does it? You self-hating fool! Of course it does! The media, meaning you, falsely portrays feminists as bra burners, outdated, combat boot-wearing bad mothers. Why don't you take your top off right now, Amy? Huh? Tell them you won't be censored anymore! No! I'm getting a little freaked out here! Uh, the, uh, hit the... let You and... We'll teach you how to make beds, march in squares, shine shoes, clean bathrooms, kill a man with your bare hands, and do it all with pride. The military teaches you all the skills you'll need later in life. Call 1-800-BE-A-HERO and become a real man today. Why are you waving your hands up? Oh, I'm supposed to hit the other commercial. This fall, a new hard-hitting police drama is coming to Friday night. He was a well-to-do cop transferred to a troubled precinct downtown. His new partner is a space traveler with a passion for justice. It's Yuppie and the Alien. Look, you might vaporize dissidents in Alpha Centauri, but in this precinct, we do it by the book. I'm so terribly sorry, Captain. Duh, Gugan sorry. Don't miss this one-of-a-kind police drama. They're fighting crime the hard way. In designer clothes, with a quarter of a million dollar sports car and a UFO. Partner, let's go cruise in the car and look moody. One tough downtown precinct, two outsiders doing things their way. Yuppie and the Alien on VBC. Hi, I'm BJ Smith, tight end for the Vice City Mamas and proud proprietor of BJ's Used Autos. Cars from all over America come to find a new home in Florida, just like you. I moved here after the draft. Football, uh, not Vietnam, even though they do have a lot in common. I noticed there was one thing missing from this great town, a celebrity-endorsed used car shop. That's why I founded BJ's Used Autos. Every one of these beauties is freshly painted. They look brand new. We have new models coming in every morning, usually around 2 a.m. We can get you anything. And if you see a car of your dreams, tell us. We can acquire it for you. I've taken the skills I've learned as a pro football player to the used car business. Smash, grab, and run like hell. BJ's Used Autos. I'm tackling low prices with hot cars. If for some reason you'd like to speak to Michaela Crapper, just give her a call on KChat. Who's on the line? Michaela, hi. Peace, sister. I'm wearing trousers. I haven't shaved or waxed in nine months. I left my broken-hearted husband and baby behind. Now I'm living in a commune with a series of life partners, having quite simple, amazing experiences. I got my inspiration from a lecture you gave last year. Thank you so much. You taught me a lot. Yes, good, sweetheart. But ask yourself, are you doing enough? It sounds to me like you're living a lie. Your life is still very man-centric. You're still justifying yourself by the I am not rather than the I am principle. I mean, really. You might as well make his bed and clean his litter tray, for God's sake. It's half-hearted fools like you who give feminism a bad name. But uh, I, I even attacked my brother with a bread knife. You show pony, prom queen, cheerleader, skirt wearer. You see, Amy, that's the thing about people. They're so half-hearted. 
pick and mix, not prepared to carry out their threats. That woman, that lady, as I bet she likes to be known, is really a self-hater, a failure in the man's world. You know, why, I bet she's never even attacked a man with a vat of boiling oil. But she said she tried to kill her brother. Don't argue with me. I write books. Okay. Next caller. Michaela, I'm a huge fan. Are you? Yes, you've really changed my life. Before I heard you speak a couple of times, I was getting into the feminist movement, but in sort of a silly way. Really? Yeah, you know, burning my bra, beating a policeman, shooting my dad and stuff. Just playing around, you know. I didn't really understand the feelings I was having. Ah, I know, the wearisome troubles of the half-hearted. Then, after listening to you, I realized what a load of crap it was. Excuse me? I realized what a load of crap it was. You can't hate men just because they're different. You can't hate anyone just because they're different. You have to work with them. Luckily, I needed a moronically pretentious, overeducated, hair-lipped old harridan like you to show me how stupid I was being. I mean, we're all just people, and it's idiots like you who cause the problems in this world in the name of reclaiming some false ideal. I'm blabbering on and on about gender politics at rallies just so you can wear leather in public. Why, you misogynist! No, you're insane! You hate yourself because you're a failure. You're an appalling academic and about as intellectual as a hemorrhoid. Goodbye. Well, uh... <clears throat> uh... Well, it's nice to see my work has stimulated such healthy debate, don't you think? Uh, Michaela, she hated you. No, nonsense. Poor dear was in bits. Not very used to the cut and thrust of academia. I thought she expressed herself poorly and didn't know what she was saying. Probably burned her husband's cakes or something. It is important for me to confront the differences and similarities between myself and other women. I am smart, strong, I seek liberation. Your society imposes on me. God, this is all so confusing. Everything has two meanings. Exactly. Apart from the word through, which has five. You can choose to be a victim, Amy, but after you read my book, you'll realize men are irrelevant. Can a man have a baby? Do I need a man to have a baby? No, we don't need men. We need more parts of town we can call our own, more parades, more gatherings of understanding where women can beat each other with pillows and practice judo. That doesn't sound like fun at all. Oh, shut up. I've had enough of you, you little tart. That makes two of us. Right. Listeners, don't go away. When you come back, we'll have a new guest, and I promise they'll be more interesting than my Michaela Crap Artist. Michaela, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure we've all found this very illuminating, and why our beliefs are right in the first place. We'll be back right after this. Love the dairy goodness, propel the toxic gas. Make that talk real low, fuck it, have a blast. You can buy it anywhere, go to a star shop. Make sure that you're in a chair, cause your hair's gonna fly. Oh no! That's the sound I love. Giggle cream, it makes dessert funny. He was a man of peace, living on a quiet farm in North Dakota. Till one day, all hell broke loose. Tim, we need you! I'm a man of peace. I'm done killing. I want to raise a family. That's just it, Tim! They've got your family! No! Jack Howitzer is Tim in Exploder. From the heart of America to the jungles of Cambodia, follow one man's quest for peace. Hoochie Bat, is that you? Tim, I know you come. Just like old days, we kill everybody. Tim, they've got your wife, but I'm not married. You are now to America. He went in to save his country, but found his family and lost a friend. Hoochie! Tim, don't leave me. You taught me baseball, Tim, and how to rap. No! He would have been a fine American. I'll cry when I'm done killing. Get yourself a body bag. Strap yourself in. Start making friends the American way. Exploder. Evacuator Part 2. Rated PG. May include patriotic garbage. So, hello everyone and welcome back to K-Chat, Vice-City's main place for things. I mean, well, it's a place in Vice-City where things go on, like interviews or things. 
or other things like that. But at the moment, it's interviews, and I'm Amy Schackenhausen, the best interviewer in Vice City and exclusive to K-Chat. Remember, you only hear Amy on K-Chat. Our next guest is a man on a mission, and that's why he's got such a silly name. His mission is simple. Zoos. His name is Mr. Zoo. G'day, I'm. Hi, Mr. Zoo. Hi, the name's Pat. Pat Flannerty? But I love zoos, I really do. That's why they also call me Mr. Zoo. Okay, and which do you prefer? Ah, uh, what, darling? Which name, Mr. Zoo or Pat Flinger thingy? Oh, I don't mind, babe, whatever you fancy. Fine by me, as long as we talk about animals. I don't give a damn what you call me, as long as it ain't Sheila or something. <laughs> You're silly, Mr. Zoo. Why would I call you Sheila? Uh, I don't know, love. You tell me. Oh, I'm, this is getting confusing. It says here your name is Mr. Zoo, and now you're saying your name is Pat Flanagan, and now you're saying it's Sheila? Eh, uh, doll, the name ain't Sheila. That's a Sheila's name. It's an Australian joke. Okay. All oh, right. <laughs> I don't speak Australian. Do I? I guess not, sweetheart. Okay, well, moving on. You're Mr. Zoo. That I am. Cool. And I hear you've made quite a name for yourself. Why is that? Because I love animals, I'm eh? Animals and publicity and stuff, but I love animals. Oh, I love them. Me too. That's the thing, babe. We all love animals, but we don't know too much about them. That's what I'm here to tell you about. That and myself, of course. Of course. So, right. What about animals? Well, it's interesting, right? But not a lot of folks realise that we're 90% the same as a fly or a cockroach or a pigeon. That's the new science out there called genetics, I think, which is going to be real popular real soon. But what it tells us is all animals are pretty much the same from a genetical level. Oh, cool. Damn right it's cool, babe. You know what that means, don't you? No, I haven't got a clue. It means we've all got to start caring for one another like family. Okay, so let me get this straight. Like, my brother is a cockroach and my dad is a pigeon and my mom is a fly. Is that right? Well, sort of, genetically speaking, but you bang on, love. And you know what that also means? Uh, no. That you could, legally speaking, marry any animal you wanted and have kids. Unless you're married already, babe. You ain't married, are you? No, I just split up from my boyfriend. He didn't like me being on the radio. Whatever. Said I sounded stupid. Well, that's my point, love. I mean, imagine if you'd been out dating a wolf or a cute little deer. He'd protect you and stuff, urinate to keep out intruders. But he wouldn't mind you being on the radio. Wouldn't mind a bit. Why not? Wolves and deers have no concept of jealousy at someone else's success. That's the genetistic variation between Homer Erectus and spider monkeys. Jealousy and fur and stuff. Oh. Oh, indeed, sweet thighs. Oh, indeed. Would you like Mr. Zoo to tell you something else? Yeah. Everything you learned in school is a lie, babe. A lie. Take pyrology, for instance. You were told sharks are dangerous, right? Yes. Cobblers, babe, they're frightened of you. They ain't gonna hurt you. Have you ever tried cuddling a shark, getting down and dirty with one, relaxing it a little? No. Well, I have, and I'll tell you, it's very rewarding, eh, babe? Very rewarding indeed. Really? Yeah, absolutely, bloody lootly love. Once you've calmed it down with a little rubbing, it's like a swimming puppy, real affectionate and stuff. Okay, I'll try that. You should, love, you really should. Let me tell you something else. Go on, go on. Well, this is something for the guys out there, really. You know, with a girl, right, you ain't got a clue. I mean, a female human, when she's on heat, right, and ready to mate, looks identical to a female human when she ain't on heat and would throw a drink over your face if you grab her behind and start trying anything intimate. You can't tell the difference. I know that only too well. But take a forker monkey from the jungles of the Philippines. When she's on heat, her behind sticks up and glows bright red and she makes a sound a bit like this. And any fool or dingbat can tell she's ripe and ready for action. Certainly clears up any confusion. Yeah, I guess it does. Or a female black widow spider. Now, they eat their mates after the deed. As they say, it's done. Ooh. Yeah, I know. That certainly puts things into perspective, doesn't it? I've never done that. No, but you can now because you're the same. Well, more or less the same. I mean, that's the funny thing about my work, about genesthetics. Oh, God, the world is so complicated. There are also lots of tiny differences between animals. You know what a species is, don't you, Aim? Yes. 
It's an animal which has other animals which are quite a bit like it. A dog is a species, but a cat isn't, because there's lots of cats. However, I've discovered out there in the wilds loads of new species that regular science practiced by repressed blokes in laboratories hasn't even known about. Really? Really, I have. There's a horny pat bear, named after me, Pat, right? Exactly the same as a regular bear, only it's got a big horny growth hidden right down its groin area. You gotta reach in, have a fiddle about, and then you find it completely different it is i was amazed when i found it i can imagine i was amazed when i left the hairdressers no wonder darling oh the double gutted pet tree monkey exactly like a normal tree monkey only it's called after me and if you have a rummage around inside going in the back door you discover it's got two digestive tracts Two amazing, really profound it was. Ooh, that's gross. No aim, it's the science of Mr. Zoo, getting down and dirty with animals, because I love them and I hate lies. Okay, it also says here you like zoos. It's a love-hate thing, babe. That, that, that's nice. But I'm certainly an expert. I know what I'm doing and I'm not afraid to expose myself. Okay, well, I'm getting a little confused here. Why don't we take a break, and when we come back, take some phone calls, because all the buttons are really flashing all of a sudden. You're on K-Chat. The science of evolution has uncovered many of life's mysteries, like tadpoles or the pyramids. But the mystery of the armpit remains. What's it for? Why is it hairy? And why do men have nipples? But one thing is for certain, the armpit smells bad. Luckily, there's Pit Bomb. It's like napalm for your skin or Agent Orange on your sweat glands. Pit Bomb stops unwanted bodily functions in their tracks. It's as effective as sending GIs into a peasant village. When you're fighting the war against personal hygiene, bring out the heavy artillery. This Friday night, it's the incredible sitcom that has captured America's heart and given the whole country a new catchphrase. But I'm 42! <laughs> Just the five of us. After a mix-up at the adoption agency, the Chesterfields came home with three zany new house guests. Jimmy, tidy your room and go to bed. I'm so sick of this. I keep telling you I've got a rare disease. I look 12, but I'm a 42-year-old investment banker. I want to go out and get laid. Oh, yeah, and I'm Santa Claus. Now tidy your room. Asshole. Sean, our posh suburban home must be a welcome change from that alley you were sleeping in. I really enjoy living here, but there's not enough booze. It's the funniest, most touching half hour on television. Charlotte, what's that smell? I set the couch on fire again. Yeah, I can help you with that. And this week, it's a very special Just the Five of Us, where an attractive blonde lady tries to steal Jimmy away. Now you're talking. Just the Five of Us, Friday nights on VBS. We're on K-Chat, and so are you. If you're listening, I'm here with Australian animal lover, Mr. Zoo. If you've got anything to ask him, why don't you just give us a call right now? Yeah, great. Give us a call right now, and I'll tell you anything you need to know about animals. Okay. Who's on the line? Is that Pat Flannerty? G'day, of course it is. And, and you're in Vice City? Yeah. What are you doing here? Promoting animals, mate. Don't you remember the court case? I get lost. Amy... Uh, let's have another caller. Uh, uh, okay, who's on line two? You're through to K-Chat. Don't hang up on me, Flannerty. You're meant to be in a hospital, you sicko. Hey, easy there, mate. Hospitals are for people who don't feel well. I'm at the top of my game. Are you insane? <laughs> don't answer that. I know the answer. You're sick and insane and you need help. I got a visa, mate. I got a visa? You can't touch me. I'm bona fide. I love animals. Leave me the hell alone, or I'll come by your aquarium and feed you to the bloody sharks, you no good. By the book, paper pushing murderer. Bobo would have lived if you let me in the tank. I could have cheered him up. I could have done. Now stay away from me, you hear? No more callers, k aim Phones are so impersonal. Not a two-way conversation like the radio. Okay. Uh, who is that? Wrong number, I think. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. A bloody wrong number. He wanted a plumber and a Chinese. I was speaking to him in Australian. 
Okay, cool. Uh, what was that about the aquarium? Nothing, babe. All in the past, long time ago, I was tricked into saying something I regretted. Oh, cool. That happens to me all the time. I can see that, love. Yeah, big mistake. Never trust a judge or a mental health tribunal. Never. Only trust animals. Okay. And what do they make you say? Nothing, babe. Oh, it was a long time ago. Look, I bought a little surprise for you. It's a little female plague rat. See how relaxed she is with me? I got special powers. She's a lot like a little Joey kangaroo in a lot of ways. You know what I mean, love? What do they make you say? I've also bought a menacing trouser snake. Would you like to see it? Look at this. It's a little frog in my pocket. Calm as you like. Not even awake. Oh, he's died. Anyway, in this pocket, I've got a baby dwarf giraffe I birthed this morning. See, she's still covered in fluid from her mum's womb. Wow, isn't that fabulous? Ooh, that's grody. What do they make you say at the mental health judge? Nothing, babe. Nothing at all. Long time ago, it was a bad period in my life. I wasn't sleeping. I was heartbroken like a platypus. Do you know a platypus only gets a bill after its mate breaks its heart by sleeping with its brother? I know all about that. I was crying my eyes out for weeks on all kinds of pills for my nerves. Couldn't move, couldn't talk. I was cooing like a dove. Please, darling, let's move on. Uh, do you want me to talk to a parrot? Now I'm really curious. What did they make you say? I love you. You do? I never knew. <laughs> they made me say I love you. Oh, I made my boyfriend say it and he slept with my best friend. I think we're bonding now. No, we ain't bonding you half. -wit. We're miles apart. I hate you. They made me say I love you to Bobo. Who was Bobo? Bobo was the most beautiful creature that was ever on the earth. Ever at all. Really beautiful. Who is she? He, he, he. Okay, okay, he. He was a dolphin and I loved him and I knew him properly. You people could never understand. It's natural. We were identical from a genitagorical perspective. And Bobo was really unhappy putting on a show every day like a circus animal. They thought they caught me doing something, but they never did, eh? They never did. We were only cuddling. How can people take that the wrong way? Babe, they took me away and they locked me up. Then Bobo died of a broken heart. He did? That's awful. But, uh, ooh, just a second, you sick bastard. Security! I loved him more than you can imagine. Call the police. Someone, please help me. This guy is molting animals. Oh, it's gross. I, I only wanted to be loved. Properly, mind, and he's gone. Hey, it's Dr. Phillips. Get lost, Doc. I got out. I'm fine. Me and my friends are traveling around in a black van and solving crimes and running from the colonel. Pat, I'm coming in. Stay away from me. Pat, you've been a very bad boy. Come on, we're going home now, Pat. Stay away from me. I got a poisonous lizard in me boot. He'll kill you in two seconds. Pat, please. We've been through this. You're not well. Bobo is dead. It's time to get back on the medication and start piecing your life back together while locked up in a padded cell for a very long time. Or until you die. Is it that time again, Doc? Yes, Pat, it is. Come on, put on the straitjacket. Look, it's even got your initials on it. And swallow this. Oh, thanks, Doc. Did I tell you I love animals and they love me? I got a message. Look for a wall at the China Cat. I'm really sorry about that. Pat is a very, very sick man. We rarely let the dangerously ill out into society. And when we do, it's not always fatal. Okay, great. Get this crackhead out of here. Sorry to be a bother. Oh, uh, um, no bother. Ah, oh, don't bang his head. Those bruises show. I never knew animals were so interesting. We'll be back after this. You're on K-Chat. Don't go away. Do yourself a favor. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME.
What better place to witness 40,000 years of nuclear winter than from the comfort of your very own space-ready nuclear bunker? When we raise 25 million, we will build a 50-story tall likeness of me. If we raise 300 million, the statue will rotate so I can look over this great city and cast an evil eye on degenerates. And when the eminent nuclear strike occurs, those who put faith into action with sufficiently generous contributions will join me inside the Pastor Richard Salvation statue as we blast into space. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. Knights of the Road, here's your stallion. The car for freedom. freedom. The car for hot excitement. excitement. The car for a man who is alone against the elements. Thunder. The pride is back. It's the power of a compact. It looks small, but it's so big. Fuel injected. Inject me. By Batsu Thunder. On the toll road of life, you have to pay to prove you can. Live the emotion of an individual. Thunder. The awesome power of nature distilled into one vehicle. Wow. It goes after you get struck by lightning. There's thunder. The My Batsu Thunder. Hello, welcome back to K-Chat. I'm a woman, so I know it's important to discuss feelings. That's why we don't have any male hosts on this station. People open up more to women. I was telling my girlfriend yesterday, if a woman were president, we'd nuke a country every 28 days. <laughs> In these times of trouble, of international scary things that cause anxiety, people seek soul ice. Or is that solace? Oh, my God. Some visit lady friends, others go to a bar, and a strange few talk to rocks. My next guest is the author of this book, I'm Loving the Coven. She sits on the board of the Vice City Res Renaissance Committee, Jeth Semini. Jeth Semini. Oh, uh, Jeth Semini. <laughs> Jeth Semini. Welcome to the show. Hello, Amy. I brought you a crystal. Isn't it gorgeous? I guess so, if you're into shiny glass. I prefer lacy gloves. Amy, for many thousands of years, my people have been using crystals and gemstones to heal the sick. Take the crystal, and then, when the night is enchanted, and the candles have been blown out, and the wind sings through the branches of the eucalyptus, hold up your arms and sing, All dewy, my sky-sailing pregnant moon, the goddess. Pregnant moon? What are you talking about? Talking about Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Sorry, whatever. Do you even have a last name? My compost coven named me Gethsemane Starhawk Moonraker. Trust me, Amy. I'm quite accustomed to people persecuting us. It's been going on for thousands of years. Native Americans, they studied crystals. The ancient Chinese, Belgians, Superman, they all studied crystals. So why do you view it as so weird? Grab your crystal, hold it tight, and close your eyes. You will be transported back 35,000 years when the temperature of Europe began to drop. The tundra was teeming with animal life, and small groups of hunters followed the free-running reindeer. And there, under the magnolia tree, a woman breastfeeding a baby elk. Do you see it? It's nature. Ew, gross. You're one of those filthy hippies that thinks breastfeeding in public is okay. Well, <clears throat> it's not. There are bottles and milk at the store. Don't act like a cow. <gasps> you really remind me of someone, by the way. See, Amy, you're putting the blinders of society on. We're all the same. I remind you of yourself, of every man and woman. Mm -mm -mm. No, not of them. They're trying to outlaw nature. If I'm in the park and a nice gentleman comes along, I should be able to breastfeed him. Pretty soon, everything natural will become illegal. It's really depressing. If I died right now, would I get buried by a female priestess in a cave, surrounded by my favorite tools and ornaments? No! There was a time when children were taught about their bodies, about the goddess lady of the mammoths, about the importance of the spiral dance clutching a bison horn under the crescent moon. 
At the Beaten Rob Shop, where I work, we have classes that teach the importance of eating wild plant shellfish and understanding ancient crop circles. Oh, I love lobster. Have you ever tried talking to one? Energy flows from everything, even a tractor. My mother, the moon, taught me how to trace ley lines with your bare feet in the dirt. Listen, you're very weird, and you smell like patchouli and compost, and I think you might have a shot at a boyfriend if you shaved and got some gel in your hair and put some clothes that fit or something. I mean, please. Did Joan of Arc shave? I was given this fascinating pamphlet called Caucasian Female Body Hair in American Culture. Amy, I love you like my sister, but honey, you've fallen prey to a sustained marketing assault that began in 1502 to convince women that underarm and leg hair was wrong. There's nothing more natural than this enormous bush I've got growing under each arm. Having hair is natural. What's the deal with Anglo-Saxons? I mean, go to England. The women there don't shave their underarms. It's really quite attractive. You just need to focus your eyes to look for healthy signs and not the signs of socialized barbarism, like shaving or wearing deodorant or birthing in a hospital, rather than the open air like a wolf cub. Remember Brother Romulus and Noble Remus? Wolf raised. I find this really interesting. Not really, but I say this because I'm told to. I'll be back on Chat after these messages from our sponsors. Howdy, partner. It's 4.30 in the morning here at Farewell Ranch, and it's time to get up and work the old cows. Get up, y'all! At Farewell Ranch, old people don't sit around stagnating, watching game shows, and talking about the good old days, sinking into the grave in a urine-soaked mess. At Farewell Ranch, they sweat and toil until the breaking point, and keep that miserable contemplation of mortality at bay. Hell, it's steering time. We'll work Grandpa so hard, he'll wish he was dead. At the end of the day, he'll sit down in the bluegrass, eat a bowl of commemorative beans, and enjoy sing-alongs at one of our nightly funerals. It's the Cowboys Code. Work hard, don't shower, and die in your boots. Right, Norm? Ah, my prostate. Farewell, Ranch. The only way to ride into the sunset. It's the knife that saved America. If you liked the film Exploder, you'll love this enormous commemorative survival knife. In the handle, you'll find all of the things you'll need in any wilderness, disaster situation, or the jungle of your backyard. It comes complete with fishing line, needle and thread for sewing gashes back together, and an incredibly useful and durable toothpick. Tim, go on without me! I got toughest stuck in tooth! It's okay, Ho-Chi. Try this! For those unplanned extended stays in the jungle, there's a saw for building your own hut, toilet paper, and a fold-out woman for company, as well as a serrated blade that can kill a man before he can scream. That'll shut you up. The Exploder Survival Knife. It's the knife that saved America. Now, it can save you. This knife killed 25,000 people in Cambodia. Now, you can too. Whatever. I'd die if I didn't have sissy spritz and blocks. Germs are, like, so gross. Oh, hi, I'm Amy, and you're on K-Chat. Gethsemane. I can't get over how familiar you are. Oh, right, Amy. I really hope you read my book. The mysteries of the absolute can never be explained. Mother Nature knows more than all of us. That's what keeps people coming back for more. People are turning into zombies. A roof separates you from the sunshine in the morning. A bed separates you from the loving earth at night. That's what's so great about learning these things. When you're no longer oppressed by the cultural pressures of making money or showering or wiping yourself after using a toilet, you can focus on the important things. Do you travel, Amy? Well, I've been up north to the theme park, and last week I went to the beach. No, really travel. My coven has been meeting every Thursday, Saturday to prepare for a grand coracle journey along the same route we took when our people came from Russia and Alaska along the Bering Strait. What's a coracle? Oh, is that like a Maibatsu? Mm-mm. I prefer American cars. No. <laughs> Coracle. Cora means Arabian gazelle, which we all know was the daughter of Zeus. And call means gather grass and sew it together. A coracle is a single-person rowing boat made of reeds and twigs from ancient Britain. There are so many wonderful things you can learn from the ancient Britons, Amy. Like metallurgy and how to cauterize the wound when a bear has eaten your arm. Everyone used to have a coracle. Amy, even people who were scared of water. We're all about working to preserve the diversity of natural life. Reuse everything. Question. 
Who's this we? My coven. Like witches? No, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, but not witches like you think. We're just a group of people who believe in communal sharing and chanting a lot and can't find husbands. Reading magazines, cloaks, wands, horned gods, rubbing your skin raw with rocks, dying of old age at 27, crying in terror when it starts to thunder, and these are all the things our ancestors did. Since I found my new mind and body, things have really changed for me. Our modern society only celebrates a select few. Every woman and every man is a star in the sky, Amy. Not just the ones that sing on TV or those people in the movies. I think I know what you need to separate your reflection from your true self. A Zen garden. Oh, my brother had one of those and the federales came. Uh, No, 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 no. Zen, silly girl. (laughs) It's a little sandbox you draw pictures in. It teaches you things like that death isn't an end. It's just a stage and also a beginning of a new journey. Do you have a leader in this weirdo cult of yours? Not a cult, a coven. There's a big difference. Yes, our leader's name is Phil. That's a weird name for a leader of a group of witches. Oh, hi, Phil. What hairy legs you've got. What with being a man who's a witch and everything. (laughs) Do not disrespect Phil. He teaches us the wheel of the year, Amy. It's full of solar holidays and goes round and round and round. You can learn a lot from the sun and the moon. If you look at the sun for too long, you can go blind, meaning it is something to be respected. And the moon has a dark side, just like we do. And some people have craters and only a sixth of gravity. The ancient Britons knew the moon could breathe. We can change the world, rearrange the world. It's dying, though, Amy, and it needs a Mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, like a swan or a fish on a hook. If you take your nervous system seriously, if you take your organs seriously and explore them, some really neat things can happen. Phil taught us that. He's been to Mali to meet with the village elders. That's why there's the ceremony of the knife. Oh, great. Why does everyone have to be packing sharp things? The knife ceremony is very important and spiritual. It's an ancient one-person personal crisis. You you say to yourself, I'm going to have a spiritual experience or thrust this thing into my head. Life actors never rehearse and need no script, Amy. That was said by somebody really spaced out. And I'm going to say it again, like the wind which keeps blowing or the sun which shines with life. Will you please leave? You smell and you talk really weird and you're just really gross. Not until I tell people out there, become an internationalist. Learn oral traditions. Learn to respect life. Make war on machines. Marry your mother. Technology will enslave us. Buy my book. It's printed on bar. Okay, okay. Let's take a quick call. Hello, you're on K-Chat. What's your name? Hey, it's Emmanuel from Prone Island. I love the show. Yeah, I want to talk about technology enslaving us. You know that play, In the Future There Will Be Robots? Well, that's a true story. In the future, there will be robots, and I'm going to hack them all. I'll make them say funny things. You know, I can move satellites around with my computer. Computers are evil. The Luddites of ancient Britain know this. That's why they destroyed the computers that created things faster and more efficient and took their jobs. Oh, shut up. Computers aren't evil. It's the people that program the computers that are evil. That's a pretty big difference. I'm talking to you through a computer right now. In fact, I am a computer. Well, anything that can think faster than me is evil. Anything which doesn't dance or sing or cry or wear a smock. You create your own reality. We are like the dust in the wind. We are golden. We've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Okay, okay. (gasps) I know who you remind me of. My Aunt Susan. Oh. She was single, too. I'm not single, Amy. I share my life with a number of valuable partners, and we commune with each other in a non-judgmental, expressive way. Old maid, my mom calls her. Anyway, let's go to the phones. You're on K-Chat. Uh, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was great. Really interesting. I'm, 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 I'm British, you see. Like our ancient wood-wearing queen, Medusa. Me, 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 Medusa. Uh, 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 uh. Um, no, I, I think actually it was it was Bodicea, but but no no not not really. I'm from Hampshire, you see. I'm I'm here on business. A wanderer. Yes, I, I was wondering. You're 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 a good witch, uh, correct? Yes, a white witch. But you have a broom. Yes, it's ceremonial. Supposing I'd been a bad boy, like if I hadn't learned my spells or something, would would I, would I get smacked with it? Violence is wrong. But you must hit Freddy with your broom. 
Freddy's been very naughty and not learned his spells. Hit me, Harry Legs, hit me! I deserve it! Prank caller! Prank caller! Sorry, listeners, somebody call the IRS. Who let that guy in the country? Yes, poor man, so lost in ill at ease with his father, son, and mother nature. I hope he finds what he needs. And I need to take a commercial break. Geth, good luck. Gethsemane. Yeah, I hope you find what you're looking for, and I sincerely hope you woo, take a bath. We'll be back after this. You're on K-Chat. Don't go away. Hi, I'm B.J. Smith. In my long and illustrious three-year career at the top of pro football, I whooped some serious ass and got paid for it. They didn't call me death in tight pants for nothing. When you have such a rewarding career maiming others as I have, you know how to stay fit. Through running, wrestling, stepping 20s on panties of foxy strippers, firearm training, nasal suit, and beating the hell out of your fellow man. That's what keeps me healthy. And now, using training methods I perfected, it's going to work for you. With BJ's Fit for Football, watch those pounds fall off. I'm down to 300 pounds using exactly the method I demonstrated on tape. I mean, who are you going to trust to get you fit? A man who can rip your arm off and beat you with the wet end? Or some aerobics instructor who wouldn't get drafted by the local hopscotch team? Hell no. BJ's Fit for Football. Out now on Beta and VHS. Remember, to win a game of football or life, you have to annihilate everything in your path in a blind rage. Ever since Linda started working, our kids are home alone. We tried hiring a nanny, but she wanted health insurance. Yeah, right. That's when we got the Mestabot. He's great with the kids. This is Lawrence. Tommy has some skin magazines under the bed. And he helps us, too. Would you like your drink, Christian? He's a great conversation piece at our special parties. Please put your car keys in the hat and the phone will begin. It's like having a personalized alarm clock. I brought you a drink. Ah, it's 8 in the morning. I made it a double. Oh, Domestabot. Domestabot. He's three foot high. He only says ten phrases. He's the friend you've always dreamed of. Order Domestabot today. So, welcome back and all that stuff. You're on K-Chat with me, Amy Schreckenhausen, on Vice City Station for the stars, including me. And boys, have I got a treat for you. Next up is a living legend, a man who won the World Series single-handed, known to his fans as Death in Tight Pants, and known to his enemies as, Oh my God, I just got flattened by a truck. How is that fair? It's sports legend BJ Smith. So, BJ, welcome. Thanks. It's a real pleasure to be here. Oh, I know. But one thing, sweetheart, I never won the World Series. That's baseball. I played football. Yes, but it's all the same, isn't it? Football and baseball aren't the same. And one of them, you get bored during a five-hour game. You touch yourself a lot and start a massive brawl with players who are degenerates, egomaniacs, and criminals. The other's football. Yes, but it's all the same. No, Amy, it isn't. Anyone can hit a home run. In baseball, you stand around the field, dividing your salary by 162, waiting for some action. Talk to a guy who just played an hour of football. He's been in the trenches getting Agent Orange sports drinks poured all over his head to keep him taking an innocent life. One is a game for men. The other is a game for pansies who like wearing button-down shirts. They call baseball a national pastime. If that means making a million dollars by standing around all day, count me out. I'll work for my money. Yeah, BJ, just like me, I can tell you. Yo, baby, it's cool. I just want you to know what I did. I do. Jeez, get over yourself. You must have a testosterone imbalance like all those jocks who shower with other men. You can't tell me you don't look at other people's business. Baby, I played professional sports for 14 years, including high school, and I'm making a comeback. I'm a very competitive person, I grant you, but I ain't got no testosterone imbalance. With that little mustache you busting out, looks like you should be talking about some hormone problems, girl. Excuse me? What did you say? Oh, oh, nothing. Damn, baby. You're so ugly, you make blind kids cry. BJ, you better stop being a bully just because I'm not into the jock scene. I like sensitive guys, you know, like actors or rock stars or that kind of thing. Not some great big hulking giant that has to tell everyone how important he is. Well, I didn't realize we were trying to impress each other here, sweet thing. I was thinking we was here to discuss my new exercise video or talk about my possible comeback in professional football. Not sitting here flirting with each other. I'm a married man. I'm on my seventh wife. So you got a big family. All those wives. That's fantastic. 
Not really. You see, I really like family, especially when some show up you didn't know existed. I tell you, Father's Day, I'm scared to go to my mailbox. My big heart has caused me a lot of heartache, but when you're in the public eye, you can't always tell what people are about. BJ has met some real manipulative people. Seven wives. That's fantastic. No, I have one wife. I had six before that. So you downsized, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. If you want to win in life, you have to change players. You can't play on the same team all the time. So, oh my God, isn't this getting intimate, BJ? I feel like we are really connecting. Yeah, I'd like to connect with you. Other men may fumble, but I go into the trenches like a doleman. That's actually part of my video. What are you talking about? Well, as you know, running the ball is like making romance. And one day when I was going for a touchdown, if you know what I'm saying, I had a great idea. You see all these fitness videos on television? It's always that idiot fool in leotards prancing about giving it the skinny thing. And I say, what is this? I mean, what in the world is this? These people ain't fit. They ain't got a clue. When you're fit, you know it. If you come into the locker room, you know eyes fit for football. Able to wrestle and pounce and hurt somebody for an hour straight. That's what people need. If someone comes to jack your ride, are you going to uh, bust a aerobic move? Hell no. But when you know how to grab another man by the face mask and twist him around and, and so he tears ligaments in his back and never play again, I mean, that's some real useful everyday stuff. And I should know. I invented it. You know, I just don't want to talk about football anymore. Well, take dating or washing the car. What good is a leotard when you're washing the car? But put a man in a helmet and a cup, and he can wash the car in dignity. That's fighting fit for football. A really very simple program. The best way to get your body fit is to have total disregard for your body. Every now and then you wake up and come out of a concussion and say, Damn, I look good. <laughs> BJ, you talk funny. We'll be back on KChat right after these messages. Are you tired of your couches getting ruined? Oh, Grandpa. I made tinkles again. If you've got old people cluttering up your home, why not send them to Musty Pines? We'll help bring back dignity, and we promise it will be the best three months of their lives. They'll enjoy bingo, complaining, mumbling incoherently, skinny dipping and organ donation. And once a month, it's our famous Lucky Dip medication switching night. Musty Pines is located at a luxurious location overlooking Vice City's state-of-the-art sanitation facilities. You can still visit your old people, but now you have the comfort of knowing you don't have to. After they pass on to something better, guaranteed in three months or less, you can start enjoying their money. Finally, you can have quality family time again. Musty Pines. Now you don't have to say goodbye. drive through service also available. He was just the boy next door. Hi, well, hello there, Danny. I didn't know it was hockey season. Hey, can I borrow a knife? A deadly curse. A deranged killer. A small town in tears. Knife After Dark. Rated R for retarded. Ew, that's gross, BJ. Stop hitting on me. Hi, I'm Amy, and you're on KJAT. So, what do you need to do for BJ's fit for football? Well, Angela, anybody can do it. What you need is a real expensive gym, a team of trainers, medical practitioners, dietitians, a baying crowd, and a opponent who wants you dead. Dead in the dirt. I mean, a nasty, blood-sucking leech of a man who will destroy you if you don't destroy him first. A man you like set animals on. He's the enemy, and you sit in your foxhole till it's time just right, and then you pounce, baby, like a kitty cat on catnip. I'll sack a man, pile drive him hard, again and again, because the idiot comes my way. I'll nail him every time. This video sounds like a lot of fun. Fun? Fun? You think it's fun when grown men cry in mortal agony, when you're so scared of what you're going to do to a man you step outside yourself like an astral projection and police go Kent State on you and, and people are crying and bleeding and, and, and pouncing each other in the face and that's just in the locker room before the game. That's your idea of fun? Yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, mine too. That's why I'm making a comeback. I've been retired two years and I'm telling you, selling cars or appearing in soft drink commercials is not fun compared to having 50,000 low IQ morons in Green Bay or, or Tampa or Liberty City or whatever, screaming how they want you dead just because you're playing for the Mambas. That's actualizing the self. Wow, that sounds interesting. Tell me about it. 
I am doing. I, I'm fin to... Hey, wait a minute. Are you reading a book over there doing this interview? No, no, I can hardly read. Get on with it. I'm trying to, Sweets. You best listen. The comeback is a real deal. B.J. Smith, six-year Pro Bowl MVP, the man responsible for more broken bones than anyone since people had legs. I'm a fiddler crab. You can rip my arms off, and I'll just moat and grow new ones. Where? Right here, right now. Let's get it on. Of course. I, I mean, when? Uh, soon, baby. Uh, real soon. But, and don't call it a comeback. Like the song say, I'll whoop your ass. And this time, I'm doing it my way. Ignorant fools, they gave me nothing to work with. The owners, I mean. What owners are you talking about? The owners of the team. They gave me nothing. They're the reason my marriage failed. I worked my ass off all those years sweating blood and, and puking my soul out. And they treat me like a tractor. Roll me around. Treat me no better than the dogs. The guys that got hurt, they never saw a penny out of those monsters. That's just like Jade. Who's Jade? She a fox? My friend, she's a goth. She got sacked for wearing makeup and an I Hate Life t-shirt to work and never saw a penny. <laughs> she like, um, football stars? She teaches kindergarten, professionally. You know, I know a lot of players who need to go back to school after they finish playing. It's a tough life and you lose something. What did you lose? Hope, diction, something. It's brutal out there. That's just like Jade. Those kids are evil little brats. Listen, are you going to talk about your freaky friends who dress like a funeral? I thought we were here to talk about BJ. BJ Smith. And I feel alive. I mean, really alive. Ain't nothing more and bigger than holding a man's head in your hands and looking him in the eyes and saying, I can kill you in one second, old man. And he says, I got a wife. And you say, give me all the money in your cash register. What are you talking about? <gasps> BJ, are those muscles real? That's funny you should ask, because the answer is yes. They ain't implants or nothing. Wow, you're enormous. <laughs> nah, this guy's twice my size, but I'm quick, rich, and angry, like a Republican. So, oh, um, I see. Look, I ain't got anything more to say to you, and I can't fall in love with another gas or I'll get sacked. So let's go to the phones. Who's on line one? Hey, Amy, I'm a first-time caller. How you doing? I love your show. Sort of. BJ, man, you're awesome. Here's my question. How'd you play that game against San Andreas with two broken legs? Oh, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Wow, man, I don't know what to say. This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> well, why the hell you call in? Don't worry, I'm a professional. The method I use in the game against essays is actually a part of my exercise video. When in doubt, go for the groin. I hope that answers your question. That's a problem with the public. Fans. <laughs> I get it all the time. Know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I get that all the time. People say, are you that girl off the television in that show? And I say, no, I'm the girl from the radio. I just look like her. Anyway, BJ, that's all we have time for for now. Thanks, Amy. And um, look after that mustache. Okay. Thank you. I'll be back on K-Chat after these messages from our sponsors. Don't go away. Are you tired of Dad? Dad, no one wants to hear your stupid Vietnam stories. Are you tired of Mom? Hi. Hey, Angel, do you want to read a book or go outside? No! The arcade comes to your living room only without the creepy guys offering to show you puppies. Awesome! Pretty Genitron, you can play video games just like you were in the arcade. Excellent! The Degenitron gaming system plays three exciting games, including Defender of the Faith, where you save the green dots with your fantastic flying red square. Cool! Monkey's Paradise, where you swing from green dot to green dot with your red square monkey. That's red! And Penetrator, where you smash the green dots deep inside the mysterious red square. Wow! The Degenitron brings arcade realism to your living room. It can even take quarters, and a strange, sweaty man comes by to empty the machine on Fridays. Degenitron! Degenitron, fighting the evil of boredom. I'll never go to school again, Degenitron! Do you have dry mouth? I thought do. It protects your teeth, bites infection, and lubricates your food. But what happens when you run out of saliva? Help me, I can't talk. For personal dryness upstairs, it's Salivex. Wow, I can spit again. Salivex is more than saliva in a can. Salivex improves consumption efficiency by 50%. No more halfway cures like coating your throat with cooking oil to have that extra piece of cake or bowl of kitty litter. 
After a night out, my tongue tasted like carpet. It was embarrassing. Now with Salivex, I can eat a whole box of crackers or lick my life partner's stamp collection all night. It's like having a salivation army in my mouth. Now I can suck a lollipop for as long as I want. Salivex tastes like your own saliva. That's because at Salivex's state-of-the-art production facilities, we use salivation philanthropists who make Salivex all day. Salivex, when it comes to personal dryness upstairs, we're deadly serious. Welcome back to KJAT. My next I'm guest gonna... is the star of the hit show, Just the Five of Us, where he appears as the rich father of a family of misfits. But more recently, he's working on the controversial theater piece, In the Future, There Will Be Robots, Claude Maginot. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Amy. However, you have mispronounced my name. It's Madge, which rhymes with badge. Uh, as in duh, and no, as in more than you. Maja no. Anyway, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to discuss my art. Yes, you're so funny. Now, Claude, you're an interesting man, if you don't mind me saying so myself. Because on the one hand, you're on the funniest show in the whole wide world, just the five of us. And on the other, you do those weird theater dance shows, which aren't funny. Yes, thank you, technical school dropout. I'm sure sitting here talking all day is terribly difficult. Juilliard is not. In the Future There Will Be Robots is not a funny piece. It deals with the most important issues in the world today. Love, pain, suffering, skin-tight pants, and well-stretched groin muscles. But see, music has no name, Amy. It's about depth and texture and sense of community that emerges from the struggle going on within all of us, between man and machine, between the angel and the beast. It's as if Petrushka and Leonard Bernstein were in a ferocious dance competition with switchblades. That is passion, my dear. Um, okay. So it's a bit like just the five of us. What a show! I love Jimmy. He is so cute, even though he looks so young. I'd rather not talk about my complications working with him. I'm a performer. I express myself any way I can. While I'd never attempt to describe just the five of us as anything other than worshipless pap, I need to support my serious art. It's like stealing a boombox to do live interpretive dance. If I bring joy to people's hearts doing an interpretation of a tree in the park, who is harmed? There is a value I derive from art, as a man, as a creator, and that is this. Never overestimate the dreadfulness of the mass market, the degrading excess of the culture, or the horrors that we all have within it. Great, yeah, um, m me too. But, as Mr. Chesterfield, you're so funny! What is it you say? Not in my house! <laughs> that gets me every time! Especially after the drunken tramp you adopted has wet himself. Oh, say it for me, please! As they say in France... Matrice. Please. Not in my house. Please. I came on your fine show to discuss art, not people that whore themselves out on the altar of commercial success, dancing like a puppet alongside a genetic freak. Although, I do that too. Okay, Moody. So, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. My performance at the Hollywood Bowl, perhaps. There are some that attend the concert inside. I am the concert outside myself in the parking lot where we build bonfires and dance. It comes back to the seriousness of my purpose. At a young age, I held puppet shows on the corner that had people weeping and lying down in the streets. It's about movement, about encouraging ordinary, working-class people that there is something enervating about a modern dance performance, that seeing in the future there will be robots will change your life no matter what your life's like now. Kind of like getting a new haircut. Yes, exactly. No, nothing like a new haircut, you halfwit. This is movement. Watch my hand. Yes, movement. There's a manatee on stage. See? He cannot hear from the wall of Wagner around him. We have lasers that shoot him down, cut him free, free his soul from the bondage of the past. And then on stage, we have snow that falls and represents love in all its forms. The robot makes a snow angel, and we begin to cry. Close curtain. Um, okay. Well, I love just the five of us. Please, 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 enough! Five succeeds while robots starve. 
Attendance has been poor. If I were opening this with the Orquestra Filarmonica di Jalapa in Mexico, there would be riots in the streets with small children giving me flowers and weeping. Here in Vice City, they wouldn't know art unless it came as a tube of beef jerky. They told me, Claude, it can't be done. Vice City is for sun worshippers and Philistines. And I told them, no. I told them, if I'm directing a work of commercial dross down there, I must save my soul with some serious art. But to be honest, Amy, they were right. <laughs> I feel ahead of my time. The best artists are ignored. I mean, surely any right-minded person would rather spend an evening watching me express the meaning of space as I move delicately across the stage in the dance of desire and denigration than flopping around in a disco or a nightclub or sucking the electric teat of television. I know I would. God, I mean, what is wrong with you people? God, my hair. What? My hair is all wrong. It clashes with my dress. Zeus, Cicero, Shakespeare, Flaubert, someone. Please save me from this hellhole. My dear, you are so ignorant. I'm trying to save you, to save everyone. You don't see the art around you. Are you in search of old Lang Syne's, singing Madama Butterfly on a windowsill, or relegating yourself to a cricket in Huckleberry Finn? I am a movement that conquers love while you complain about your dress. Know you not how important my mission be? Right. Cool. Okay, Mr. Chesterfield, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Magonaut, you gotta hang in there. You're on K-Chat, and I'll be right back. At the law firm of DeLeo and Furex, we understand that sometimes life throws you a curveball. We help our blue chip clients get their lives back after circumstances have conspired against them. Just listen. It was an unfortunate accident what happened to my wife on that precarious cliff. DeLeo and Furex can't bring my wife back, but they made sure I didn't end up in the slammer. I was unfortunate enough to be found with 15 kilos in my spare tire. I was so mad at the auto repair shop that sold me that tire. Thanks to De Leon Furax, the district attorney saw it that way too. Uh, I accidentally torched a Quickie Mart when my medication ran out. <laughs> De Leon Furax helped me and the community by ensuring a healthy settlement from the pharmaceutical company. At De Leo and Furax, we understand the judicial system and will ensure the truth is heard, no matter how improbable. We're not cheap, but what price can you put on truth? Call the Leo and Furex today at 866-974-2333. That's 866-9-SHADY. The Leo and Furex. Accidents happen, and we'll prove it. The store leading the fight against communism is having a blowout sale. Ammunition has a wide array of peacemakers. Come by Ammunition on Militia Mondays, exercise your Second Amendment rights, and get 10% off all armor-piercing bullets. We're the only gun store that lets you try it before you buy it. Need anti-tank missiles? We've got them. Flamethrowers? Oh, yeah. No credit? No problem. No money down? 90 days, same as cash. Shoot now, pay later. During the 10-minute waiting period, fire up a few rounds of the Ammunition Gun Range, featuring faces of famous commie pinkos. Come by Ammunition and register to win an anti-aircraft gun actually used when we whooped Australia's ass. This weekend is the Ammunition Film Festival with free screenings of the documentary Red Dawn. Ammunition, protecting your rights. You're back on Gay Chat with me, Amy, and my special guest. Let's go to the phones. Mr. Maginot, Bruce from Prawn Island here. Big fan of the show, Mr. Madge. No, big fan. Dude, I don't know about the, the robot thing. It, it, it's weird. Quickly, is he really 42? Does he shop in the kids' aisle? Does he get on roller coaster rides? I mean, what's the deal? Does he pay half price at the movie? No comment. Next caller. Oh, my God. Trauma. I meant that... That's my line. I'm supposed to say that. Oh, God, this guy is such a dick. Ugh. Next caller. Oh, who's on the line? I mean, who's on the line? Oh, what number is it? Who, who's on the line? Hello, Claude. This is Morgan. I'm just vacationing down here, having finished my doctoral thesis into images of young boys in post-Lapsarian Greece and the erotic understatement of the fugue in contemporary Baroque. Fascinating stuff. Mmm. Do you have a question? I'm confused. No, woman. I just wanted to tell Claude about my thesis and discuss his bleaker death in Venice street period. Of course I have a question, you silly girl. Claude, I saw robots. Big 
fan, and that's praise indeed coming from me. I normally hate anything humanity has achieved since 1836. But one thing fascinated me, Claude, about the show, the pants. They were so tight, so fitted. How do you get such a marvelous, close, sequin figure hugging fit and still? Hmm? Oh, and were the sequins a reference to lasers? Yes, yes, my, my, I agree. Thanks for calling. That is an important question. You see, I'm an important person, and I especially think so. It is really important for people to see my form move through space in very tight pants, or the effect is ruined. Interpretive dance cannot be expressed in baggy clothing. It's like a violin parade. Otherwise... Why have a love story with a manatee and the lasers? It's very important. You're kind of creepy. You're nothing like you are on the show. You're so funny there, joking with the family and putting out the fires started by the homeless guy and starting group hugs. But in real life, you're just plain creepy. You won't even tell us how old Jimmy is. All you talk about is Archie stuff like that nobody understands because it's complicated and how tight your pants are. That's not true. I also discussed love and passion and amenity and the lasers. You, my dear, could use all three. You, my dear, are a Philistine. I'm sorry, but this is one of the most degrading, debasing, horrific, unedifying, opportunistic things I have ever done in my life since that whole Rake's Progress lawnmower commercial. I feel dirty, like I just sat in something. You did. Our last guest was taken violently ill. Yes, well, such is the plight of radio. Rather than grumble like Leporello or a taxi driver about my duties cleaning the back seat, I shall bid you adieu. Okay, thanks, Claude. Next, we have a very important guest who doesn't dance like a weird jerk. We'll be back right after this. You're on K-Chat. Knights of the Road, here's your stallion. The car for freedom. Freedom. The car for hot excitement. Excitement. The car for a man who is alone against the elements. The Wenpatsu Thunder. The pride is back. It's the power of a compact. It looks small, but it's so big. Fuel injected. Inject me. My Batsu Thunder. On the toll road of life, you have to pay to prove you can. Live the emotion of an individual. Thunder. The awesome power of nature distilled into one vehicle. Wow. It goes after you get struck by lightning. There's thunder. The My Batsu Thunder. <laughs> What's this I found under your bed? The only Engels you're going to read is Laura Engels Wilder. If you think your child might be a red, here are some warning signs. They read complicated literature and have concern for their fellow man. They even like to share. Tell your kids if someone approaches them with pamphlets about recycling, an invitation to a labor rally, or showing any doubts about the fairness of our system, then they should find a teacher or a policeman immediately. Do yourself a favor. Take both hands off the wheel and touch the stereo. Do you feel the power? Ah, oh, yes, friend. There's a lot of evil in the world, but there is also light. And I have been sent to shine a light on all degenerates, philanderers, liberals, and other evildoers and expose them for what they really are. Don't waste your money on unnecessary and corrupting material possessions. Give it to me. There's only one thing that will save you. A highly fortified structure in the shape of the most powerful thing on the planet. Me. Degenerates will ruin this great city. In my wonderful book, I tell of the impending disaster about to befall this planet. Nuclear holocaust. Plagues of flying rodents. The seas rising up and turning yellow. It is coming. It is written by me. But you can save yourself. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. Hi, and welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're listening to K-Chat by City's only commercial talk station, the place where the stars shine in conversation with you and me. I'm Amy Schechenhausen. My next guest is a rising star in the world of North mythology. He's appeared in several best-selling infomercials and travels the globe speaking at corporate training camps. His books and audio cassettes are sold around the world. <laughs> he is Valhalla's finest deity and motivational speaker, Thor. Hi, 
Hello, Amy. I'm happy to be here. It's been a long journey. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know much about you. I mean, I read Beowulf. Well, I didn't, but I read the cover. But, like, you're a Viking, right? Did the tunic and goatskin boots give you a clue, maybe? I am a Viking, and a Viking that will not only help you unleash the Furies, but unleash yourself. It's in my Thor's Norse Power program. Okay, I'm a little confused. Well, I'm a lot confused. I was taught in school that Vikings were bloodthirsty and violent. An elder once told me, you must unlearn what you have learned. Of course, then he died of the Green Plague. There are some Vikings that are a bloodthirsty lot, yes, but no more than anyone else, really. We're a nomadic people, Amy. We have cold fire in our souls. Ye have that fire too, Amy. You've just lost it since you've gotten television. Now, that being said, I'll answer your question. We are mostly nonviolent, though many of the Vikings travel to Scotland. And mind you, anyone who goes there will turn bloodthirsty. You can't understand what the lot are saying. It's all a four, Recklin, a boot, Diné. It's enough to make you want to burn a village to the ground. That's why, in my cassette series, I talk about the importance of communication. You see, Amy, men and women live in different worlds. We use different words. A group of men talk about what they've killed, how to start a fire, who has the best long boat. Women want to talk about keeping the communal long or tidy and their feelings. When I'm raiding a village, I don't need to be talking about feelings. It's time for action. Great. So is that all there is to being a Viking? Pillaging? No, lass, no. Pillaging and battle are important, but we admire poetry as well. As long as it's poems about whacking someone in with a double-handed battle axe. What's holding you back, Amy? In Chapter 3 of my book, I talk about listening to the bloodthirsty water spirit. It's really quite important if you want to enter Valhalla. I think I went there last night. Oh, no, mm -mm, that was Malibu. But it's the same sort of thing. Valhalla was that golf club, wasn't it? So, 1983. But right, what does being a Viking have to do with anything? This is the 20th century. We have electricity, penicillin, jet planes, implants. Well, I don't, but I want some, but I heard the operation is really gross. You live like it's 982 AD or something. Mind ye tongue, wench, lest I cut it out. Deep down, all of you listening to me say, Thor, yes, I'd like to unleash the Viking within. Maybe you'll go camping once a year or hunting and wonder why it feels so natural. That's because it is. Too much of this denying your instincts. Men shaving. You know, deep down in the pit of your soul, you wish you could crouch in the grass with flies biting your face, afraid to move for fear of alerting the beasts, covering yourself with yak urine to thwart your smell. Then, a beast draws close. You bounce, bringing your battle axe on its skull. Man and animal at that moment, one and the same in a terrible beauty. Then you drag the carcass back to camp and celebrate by eating its heart. Some people, they only do this once in a lifetime. I do this every day, and so can you. All it takes is some positive thinking. Just attend my Unleash the Norse Within weekend. When you are finished, you will say, I am a god. Nobody can stop me. I crush my enemies and dance on their funeral pyres. This is very helpful for living in suburbia, Amy, and I should know. I really don't understand how. Oh, it's very helpful. Maybe a neighbor is tossing his leaf clippings on your lawn, or looking at your woman, or harboring desires regarding your longboat. You enslave his children, set his house on fire, he shall not bother you again. <laughs> it must be nice to have you as a neighbor, not. I live in no place longer than needed to fulfill my goals. Taking slaves, valuables, and food. Goal setting is very important, Amy, not just in football. You're very weird and creeping me out a bit, but whatever. No weirder than anything else. So, what do you think of Vice City? Ah, I like it very much. Your women here are prepared for battle. They are large, not like those scrawny things to the north. A woman who weeps well provides for her man. You cannot set sail for robbing and pillaging on an empty stomach. It's like the story of the parson's wife and the troll. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Great Carl Erson, ye mainlanders have no historical perspective. Read the runes. It's all right there. Talk to a grandparent. But no, ye cast people out like rubbish. Wisdom is not to be treated so lightly. When my father grew old, I sat with him day and night, absorbing his wisdom, learning about the demons and where the wickedness resides in men's hearts. Then as his time grew near, I built a large pyre, burnt him and his wife while communing with Odin's spirit. Careful, Musty Pines is a sponsor of the show. Oh, Grody, what are you doing? I'm just adjusting myself, she-devil. Wearing these animal hides does get a bit itchy. Um, okay. You never answered my question. What do you think of Vice City? Your land and people have a lot in common with mine. You see, we too fled our homes due to lack of food, overpopulation, and the bitter cold. And, mind ye, darting out to raid passing ships is fine, but we needed a new land to have our way with. 
Granted, we roll and sail to an area, land in force, and burn down a local monastery or village, whereas you come in, destroy all the creatures, and sow plastic versions of them. You did a fine job pillaging these lands, but you should have done something about Canada. Wait a minute there, Buster. My mother's half Canadian. Oh, what are you going to do, wench? Sweep the ice furiously at me? Ha! Socialized medicine? Nah, you did it all wrong. You should have continued to the north and finished things off. I talk about this in me motivational learning tapes. That, and beware the magpie. Tis the devil. Evil reigneth when darkness falls. Are you married? You seem like a tough character to live with. Aye, me wife Helga. What a hag. This show is not sexist, whatever certain bearded women might say. Women are people too. I'd appreciate if you wouldn't talk that way. Ah, go live in a chimney, you troll. You 20th century women are all the same. And me hag Helga, she fell prey to your uppity ways. She says to me, Thor, I ain't having no mead no more. I'm going to meetings. See, that's your problem. Soon as you sort something out, you have to go preaching from the rooftops to everyone else how to live, not pillage nor plunder no more, but live in boxes. Then she says, Thor, I'm getting me stomach stapled. I look fat and now fitteth two yak skins, where previously twas only one. I say, wench, don't come crying to me when we're in a longboat crossing the straits for two moons, and you're all skin and bones. A man needs something to grab onto. I ain't her fault. A cursed pixie goblin got her. Pixie Goblin, what kind of weird ancient nonsense are you talking about? Now, Thor, I've got to ask you, how old are you? I am as old as a fjords, as young as a newborn lamb. Are you shy about your age? <laughs> Just lie about it, like my mom. Thor is never shy. Thor is mighty. Thor is a god. And where are you from? From the beginning of the flat earth, where the sun meets the sky. Oh, right. By the beach. Great. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Thor. He's a real Viking. Yeah, right. Whatever. Hello. I am Fernando Martinez. I think by now you know I am an emotional kind of guy. People stop me in the street and say, Fernando, what the hell is wrong with me? Silk shirt, hairy chest, enough aftershave to drown a household pet, but I still cannot get a woman. I tell them you are an ignorant fool. Without a symbol of power and fertility around your neck, what kind of woman is going to respect you? That is why I have teamed up with Medallion Man, the shop for medallion needs. Medallion Man caters to all levels of masculinity. For the strong, silent type, a medallion the size of a hubcap will say everything that needs to be said. Even singing medallions for the Casanova, who knows, music is the food of love. Model trains, dollhouses, diapers, whatever your interest, we've got a medallion for you. Don't forget, every woman knows if you can't support a medallion, you can't support a family. We have some sad news for you. Rock and roll is dead and pop is in! Why not discover the excitement of the science of music yourself at Synth and Son, the home of keyboards. Thanks to the science of music, you don't need musical talent to make great music. Just listen. I created that just by pressing a button. Synthesizers are the new wave. Why work hard on difficult compositions when a machine can make music better than you've ever dreamed of? You'll be the hit of the party. It's perfect for in-restaurant entertainment, cover bands, and funerals. Make fugues funky and death marches danceable. It's the science of music at Synth, Synth, Synth and Son. Remember, you don't know you're a musician until you try. We're back on K-Chat with me, Amy, and my guest is Thor, Viking warrior and elf help guru. Do you have a last name? Oh, whatever. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about the wisdom of the ancients. There are many hurdles in life, Amy. I remember one of the first bits of fan mail I got. It came by bottle in the sea. A man of Lollard Island said, A tiny woman came to our farm and swept in front of our door. A woodland troll has carried off my woman in the dead of night. Give me wisdom, Thor. So, what did you tell him? Aye, Amy, it was obvious the Black Plague had visited his home. As sure as you can't be a midwife to a fairy, expect wisdom from a fool, or find a good meal downtown on a Saturday night. Okay. I don't, um... I really have nothing to ask you because I really don't think we're bonding quite right here. I'm more than a little confused. Let's go to the phones. You're on K-Chat with Thor. Yes, hello, Thor. My name's Jay. I'm a huge fan, man. Your book really helped me get through puberty. Everyone else was into vampires and stuff. I just got into the Viking thing. It's pretty cool. It's been working pretty well for me. Anyway, my girlfriend and I, we fight all the time. She's always calling to check up on me. It really totally sucks. It's a drag. Like, I hang out at the strip mall with all my boys, and she shows up. Is there any advice you can give me? Ah, yes. 
There was a man who asked for a night's lodging at a certain farm on the eve of Moundy Thursday, or maybe it was Fat Tuesday. Anyway, in the course of the night, the old woman of the house took out a horn of salve and smeared herself with it from head to toe. She then climbed on top of the stove, sat astride a sweeping broom, and began to... Um, hello? Excuse me, what the hell are you talking about? Reading from the runes, wench! What kind of rune is that? Aye, it's a man's rune, and not appropriate for the warrior under 18 years old. But there's a moral at the end. Are you still there, Fair Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Do you love this woman? Yeah, I, I think so. She's really special. Especially in the back seat, if you know what I mean, Thor. Then behead her and parade thy love around on a stick for the world to admire. Wow, cool. Thanks, Thor. Okay, I'd like to throw you out, but you've got an enormous sword and, uh, yeah, let's take another call. But first, listeners, Vice City, remember, don't behead your girlfriend and take her head around on a stick. Hello, you're on K-Chat with Thor. Hey, brother, my name is TJ. Your book is fresh, real fresh. Like, it's been a real inspiration and all that. It's most definitely on me and my crew's vibe. And that Loki brother, he's as slick as Salivex. You know what I mean, Trooper? In fact, me and my boys have started a Thor fan club. You know what I'm rapping? We're on your vibe, man. Aye, a Thor fan club. This pleases Thor very much. I shall speak of myself in the third person from now on. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't really into school all that much. But I hear you, Thor. So, so anyway, we have this fan club, right? And instead of naming it something like the Vice Lords of Valhalla, we gave it, like, a, a modern name. Keeping things firmly in the 80s, you know? The Bloods. Ain't that off the wall, man? We follow your teachings to the letter, sir. Especially how you go around smiting fools with that wild mad hammer of yours and getting people to know exactly what time it is, you hear? Have you a magic hammer? Nah, T. We don't have any Odin types around here to strap us with super fly hardware like yours, but we do have Mac 10s, Tech 9s, Tray 8s, Street Sweepers, and all that. Are you still on my vibe, brother? Hey. I like the sound of this. Methinks I want to join your group. Do you pillage proper? Hell yeah! We do it like a Viking. You ought to come party with us. We'll even make you an honorary blood. Word. Ah, indiscriminate pillaging. This is, as we say, the school of old. When I am done with the wench, we shall meet. Till then, beware the frost giant, TJ, and the serpent with two tongues. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Yo, brother, where'd you land that funky fresh silver helmet of yours? Those wings on the side are wicked, money! Stop calling me a wench! I have much to teach you, wench Amy. Only if you would listen. For many centuries, people have asked questions. Why is my fatted calf gone after the gypsy woman appeared? Are there trolls living in my chimney? Aye, sure, I could tell ye the story of the twelve children on a platter, or the midsummer snow, and the spirit hatched from a cock's egg. But in the end, Amy, you need a spirit journey. A wandering spirit demands a wandering body. Take a long boat. Pack only what you can carry. Head toward the moon at high tide. Okay, thanks for the advice. And with that revelation, I'm going to have to change topics. That was Thor, Viking Warrior. Coming up next, we have another guest. We'll be back right after this. How do you like to enjoy a Rusty Brown's Ring Donut? I like to lick lovingly around the outside and then thrust my tongue in the middle. I like to munch it vigorously. I just love the batter all over my face. On Friday nights, I just can't stop eating Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Oh my god, it's so good. Sometimes I like to wear women's panties and walk around Fifth Street. When you go downtown, make sure you enjoy Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Hi, I'm Jeremy Robar, entrepreneur, VIP, and founder of the revolutionary program, Think Your Way to Success. It's a three-step program that's been changing lives and my income for the last two years. Five years ago, I was a nobody, just like you. After my Think Your Way to Success program, I spend the entire weekend in my jacuzzi or engaging in the exciting sport of domino toppling. Hey, if you can think it, you can do it. One of my award-winning courses is sure to be perfect for you. The first course I call Think, Hold That Thought, Complete, because that's what you do. Step two is known as Learn, Start, Doing, where I explain the mysteries of starting. Or take the new accelerated course that will have you laughing and hugging strangers. Motivate, demonstrate, then motivate again. Just listen to these endorsements and remember, these people volunteered. They aren't being paid much. I've been on the Think, Hold That Thought Complete program, and I have to say, I'm finally going to start my career in being a well-paid rich person. Yeah, I've been thinking my way to success for a while now. It's some good stuff. Call now and sign up for my Think Your Way to Success program. And if you want to think really fast, try my Crank It Out program. 
Call 1-866-434-SELF. Hey, don't just do it. Think about it. Sweaty leather tracksuit? Absurdly fat Daglo laces? Something missing? Complete the look with a replica car sign insignia on a chunky gold plate chain at Vice City's one-stop shop for people who know how to put the hip into hip-hop. Wow, you look fresh. Complete the look.